God bless you. Join us as we praise and worship the Lord this evening. May the Lord bless you. Just join us. Let's thank the Lord for His beauty. Amen. God is awesome. Give us all we need and more. Give us all we want and more. Withholding nothing from the ones. Lord, you don't withhold anything, Lord. And I thank you for this evening. Open up your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing, Lord. Surely I had fainted if I had not seen your goodness. Surely I had fainted. Hallelujah. Come on, just praise the Lord where you are. Lord, we thank you for your goodness, Lord. You are a sustainer. You're the Lord that provides. You're the Lord that supplies. And we just praise you, Lord. This evening, we give you praise. Come on, tell the Lord, surely I would have fainted unless I would have seen. Surely I had fainted if I had not seen your goodness. Surely I had fainted. Hallelujah. If I had not seen your goodness. Surely I had fainted. We worship you. Come on, tell the Lord. Surely I will have fainted. Surely I had fainted. Yes, Lord. If I had, if I had not seen your goodness, God. Lord, you are good. Come on, tell the Lord. Lord, you are good. We praise you, Lord. You are good. You are good. You are God. We praise you, Father. We praise you, Father. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness. Come on, tell the Lord. You are good. You are good. You are God. You are good, Lord. We worship you, Lord. You are good. You are God. We praise you, Lord. Father, we just thank you for your goodness, Lord. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. Lord, despite how we are, you are always good. Your mercies are brand new every morning. And my soul magnifies the Lord. My soul will be forever grateful to you, Lord. My soul will be forever grateful to you. awesome you are mighty you are powerful and lord we just thank you for this day we thank you for your glory we thank you for your goodness we thank you lord for this day as the blessed presence of the lord is here with us lord and lord as i share your wonderful word with your blessed people bless them with the mighty word of god Lord, I thank you for the spirit of revelation upon each and every one of them, Lord. And I thank you as we rejoice in the presence of the Lord. And to God be all the praise and majesty and God's people say, Amen, Amen, Amen. Hallelujah. God bless all of you. Are you guys ready to receive the word of the Lord this evening? Hallelujah. Thank God. Amen. Now, open up your Bibles to Galatians chapter 3. Praise God. Galatians chapter 3. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The word of the Lord declares in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, it says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become, or King James says, having been made a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. So here, the word of the Lord shows us that Jesus on the cross was made a curse. Listen, I'm still speaking on healing today, amen? i just starting with this verse, but I'm still talking about healing because I want God's people to be healed. You might be looking at this now and saying, well, I'm not sick. I don't need a healing. Okay, that's fine. But you need to know the covenant. You need to know the word of God. 
because Satan will knock with sickness and disease on our, on our door. And we need to know the covenant. We need to know the word. For the scripture says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. So we must be filled with the knowledge of his word. Okay? So it's not just for those who are sick physically. It's for those who need to be anchored in the covenant of God. So you too can minister the healing power of God to other people. Amen? So here we see that the Bible says that Jesus was made a curse for us, has become, King James says, made a curse. The New Living Translation says, but Christ has rescued us from the curse pronounced by the law when he was hung on the cross. He took upon himself the curse for our wrongdoing. Wow, powerful. He took upon himself the curse for our wrongdoing. He became a curse. What else did Jesus become on the cross? We've been teaching on Jesus not only carrying our sin and was made sin. For 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, He who knew no sin was made sin. So Jesus was made sin. What we see in Isaiah 53.4, He took sickness. So He took our sickness. He took our sin. He took our transgressions. He took our iniquities. He took our punishment. On the cross, and here we see he was made a curse. He took the curse of the law. Now, what does the word curse mean? The word curse, it means the penalties received due to condemnation. So Jesus received all the penalties of sin for breaking the law. He didn't break the law. You and I did. We transgressed. Jesus was sinless, perfect, perfect, home, holy, and blameless. Amen. But we see that Jesus took the penalties of sin. The penalty, the curse that results when God himself curses or condemns something. The Bible says in Deuteronomy, that's where Paul, the Apostle Paul is quoting, that curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. A man that was crucified was considered a cursed man. Okay? Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. But Jesus was, was declared a cursed. But he was made a curse, the Bible says. He took sin, sickness, disease, poverty, oppression, depression. Everything that you can think of that's a curse, Jesus took it upon the cross. Hallelujah. And let me tell you something. Why did he take the curse? Verse 14 says that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ. Hallelujah. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So Jesus takes the curse so that you and I can take the blessing. So that you and I can walk in the blessing of God. Praise God. Listen, you are blessed in Christ Jesus. I want you to say, I'm the blessed in Christ. And what God has blessed, no man can curse. Okay? No one can place a curse on you. No one can curse you because you are in Christ and you have been, you have been declared blessed by God. It says here, he became the curse so that you can become the blessing and carry the blessing and be a blessing on this earth. Amen. So Jesus carries sin, sickness, disease, death, the curse, the full penalties all on his blessed body. What a blessed Lord. Amen. What an awesome Jesus. Wow. An awesome Lord that paid the price for you and I. So he became a curse. The Bible says he was disfigured on the cross. You couldn't even recognize him. He was, dis he was marred and disfigured on that cross. He did not even look like a human being, the Bible says in Isaiah 52, at the end of 52. So we see that Jesus placed all that curse, the chastisement for our peace was upon him. He took the punishment. He became a curse so you, you and I can carry the blessing of Abraham. Now, when did the curse come? The curse came, as you know, in Romans chapter 5, verse 12. We see that Adam opened up the door. Adam became the portal for sin, death, sickness, disease, poverty, all those things. In Romans 5.12, it says, Therefore, just as through one man, sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sinned. So here we see that through one man, Adam, he opened up the portal. Once he sinned, death followed. Because man was not supposed to die. Man was supposed to live forever. So death is not really normal. Death is not God's original plan. The Bible calls death the last enemy. Okay? I know it's natural that everyone dies physically on earth. But death, that was never supposed to happen. 
The Bible says the last enemy to be destroyed in the book of Revelation is death. Death has been conquered on the cross, and the day is coming when death itself will be thrown into the lake of fire. Now, Romans 5, 12, through one man sin enters. So once Adam opened up the door and became the portal to sin, to come into the earth, death followed. Sickness followed, disease followed, oppression, depression, poverty followed because of what? Sin. So the root issue here is sin. And Jesus has dealt with the problem of sin on the cross. Hallelujah. He crucified sin on the cross. He destroyed sin on the cross. Amen. So now we see that Adam was the portal to bring, to bring sin, sickness, disease. Jesus was the portal to bring righteousness, to bring life to bring health, to bring healing, to bring the blessings in our lives. Praise God. Now, go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, and we see that in Proverbs 26 too, it says that as the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. The curse causeless shall not come. The reason a curse come is because there's a cause, okay? You and I open up doors. When, when we sin, it opens up doors for the curses that are already on the earth because you and I have been redeemed from the curse of the law. But the, but the curse is still out there. It just can't touch you because you are the redeemed. Amen? But the curse is out there. But what causes a curse to follow us, to be upon us? It says, so the curse causeless shall not come. That's Proverbs 26 too. The moment you and I sin, it gives a curse a cause to come. But if there's no sin in your life, praise God, if you don't practice sin, the curse won't come. And remember, what God has blessed can never, ever be cursed. You can ask the prophet Balaam. King Balak said, go curse Israel. And when he went to go do it, he said, I can't do it. I can't curse Israel. And he told the king, he said, why didn't you curse them? Because I cannot curse what God has blessed. And it cannot be reversed. And God's people said, amen. amen. So, <laughs> Once God releases the blessing, he ain't taking it back. Amen? Now, Deuteronomy chapter 28, here we see a list of the blessings when we obey God and the curses if we disobey God. Okay? So, Deuteronomy chapter 28, from verse 1 to verse 14, the blessings are listed. And you can read it for yourself. But verse 2 says, And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. So once you and I obey, blessings follow. Blessings follow. If you want blessings to follow you, follow you, if you want goodness and mercy to follow you all the days of your life, all you have to do is obey God. It's that simple. Now, but the curses are listed in verse 15 to verse 68. There's a list of curses for disobeying God. Now, you and I, when we read the curses, read the curses. You know why you want to read the curses? Because you want to know what you've been redeemed from. Hallelujah. I know people just want to read about the blessings. That's good. Read verse 1 to verse 14, what you experience if you obey. But verse 15 to 68 shows us everything you and I have been redeemed from. And I'm focusing right now on sickness and disease. Okay? So I'm not going to mention, I'm not going to read all the curses. But I'm going to mention the, the parts that have to do with sickness and disease. Because you need to know you've been redeemed from that. You've been rescued from the curse. That curse should not be on you. Okay? Now, Verse 21, in Deuteronomy 28, the Bible says, The Lord will make the plague, the word plague there means pestilence, cling to you until he has consumed you from the land which you are going to possess. So here we see, the Lord will make the plague, the pestilence, stick to you. This is part of the curse if we disobey. Watch this, verse 22. The Lord will strike you with consumption, with fever, with inflammation, with severe burning fever, with the sword, with scorching, and with mildew. They shall pursue you until you perish. So here we see in verse 21 and 22, when you read that, verse 21 says the Lord will make the plague cling to you. I want to, I want to tell you that you've been redeemed from this plague. I don't care what plague or what pestilence it is. Jesus took sin and sickness redeemed you from the curse. These are the curses. You've been redeemed from the plague. You've been redeemed from the pestilence. Hallelujah. What else were you redeemed from? Verse 22. It says you were redeemed from consumption. What is consumption? Consumption is wasting disease. 
is a disease that wastes your body and kills you, okay? Especially pulmonary tuberculosis. That's what, that's what the in translation is. This consumption is pulmonary tuberculosis. If any one of you is suffering from any pulmonary tuberculosis, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Not you, the tuberculosis, okay? I rebuke infirmity from your life. You've been redeemed from tuberculosis. What else have you been redeemed from? Fever. That word fever, they low-grade fever. Any fever you have, you've been redeemed from the fever. What else? From inflammation. Inflammation in your body, from the top of your head to the soles of, of your feet. It don't matter what organ in your body is inflamed, you have been redeemed from inflammation in the name of Jesus. What else? With severe burning, fever. That's high fever. Hot fever. You've been redeemed from that. What else? From the sword, from death. What else you've been redeemed from? With scorching. Scorching means blight. It means a, a plant disease and mildew, fungus. You've been redeemed from all types of fungus. Praise God. And what else are you redeemed from? Verse 27. The Lord will strike you with the boils of Egypt, with tumors. You have been redeemed, in verse 27, from tumors. Every sort of tumors, you have been redeemed from tumors. And if anyone has tumors in their body, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus right now. I rebuke every tumor from anyone's body, from the top of their head, hallelujah, to the soles of their feet. I rebuke every tumor in the name of Jesus. I curse every tumor right now. If you have any tumor, I rebuke it and I command it to shrink and go away. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, you've been redeemed from tumors. What else you've been redeemed from? With the scab. What is the scab? The itch. And with the itch from which you cannot be healed. Uh, cannot be healed. So you've been redeemed from tumors, and you have been redeemed from the scab. The itch, hallelujah. Some people have an itchy body. <laughs> Different reasons why you have the itch. I'm here to tell you that you've been redeemed from the itchy itch. Hallelujah. Wherever you itch, there's some people that have a problem with scratching themselves all over the place, okay? Because they have a, a, an itch in their body. You have been redeemed from the itch. And God's people say, <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. So what else have you been redeemed from? In verse 28, the Lord will strike you with madness. Madness in the scriptures. What does it mean? Craziness. There's a lot of crazy people in the world, okay? Not one believer should be crazy because you've been redeemed from madness. Man, madness means crazy. People have lost their mind, okay? Especially, I'm not going to say, hallelujah, let me be good. But listen, there's madness all over the place. Craziness, people have lost their mind. Jesus has paid the price so you can have a sound mind. The Bible says he's, he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, sound mind. Christ has paid the price for a sound mind. So you have been redeemed from madness, from craziness. No one should be crazy in Christ Jesus. Amen. We, should, we have the mind of Christ, not a crazy mind. Praise God. What else? And blindness, whether it's physical or spiritual. Jesus went about healing physical blindness, healing the people. Restoring their sight. But spiritual blindness, we've been redeemed that we can see in the spirit. What else? And confusion of the heart. What is confusion? A lot of us know there's people that walk around in a confused state. They look like they are in the twilight zone. You look at them and they look confused. They walk around in life looking confused. You and I have been redeemed from confusion. You and I have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. We see clearly. We hear clearly. We think clearly. Why? Because Jesus became a curse for us. What else have you and I been redeemed from? Look at verse 59. It says, Then the Lord will bring upon you and your descendants extraordinary plagues, you and I have been redeemed from extraordinary plagues, every type of plague. What else? Great and prolonged plagues, meaning sicknesses that stick around. We've been redeemed from that. And serious and prolonged sicknesses. Right there. Deuteronomy 28, 59. Verse, verse 61. 
also every sickness and every plague which is not written in this book of the law will the law bring upon you until you are destroyed. You and I have been redeemed from every sickness and every plague. Hallelujah. And I love this. Every sickness and every plague which is not even written in this book. Because back in those days, there were some, some sicknesses and disease that, we, that they, didn't, they didn't have that we have now. But you and I, it doesn't matter what sicknesses it is. From A to Z, you and I have been redeemed from every sickness and every plague. That's why Jesus went about healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Praise God. Because Remember, he was fulfilling Isaiah 53, where he bore our sicknesses and carried our pains. He was fulfilling it in his earthly life as he was healing the people. He was beginning the fulfillment of that prophecy and finished the fulfillment of that prophecy on the cross when he took sin and sickness. But you and I have been redeemed from every sickness and every plague, even plagues that we don't even know the names of. You and I have been redeemed from that. Praise God. God wants a healthy, God wants a strong people. Listen, John writes in 3 John chapter, chapter 1. He writes, beloved, hallelujah. He calls us beloved, means loved by God. Beloved, I pray that you prosper in all things and be in health even as your soul prospers. The Apostle John writes this because it's the will of God that you and I be in health. Now, I'm praying for divine healing, but God wants us walking in health. To walk in health and need a miracle is two different things. When you are in health, you don't need a miracle. But when your body is in disorder, you need a miracle. You need, you need a healing. But the will of God is that you and I be healthy that's why God told them in the book of Leviticus what foods to eat and what foods not to eat because some foods are not good for your body, okay? For example, the pig, the pig that you all love to eat, which tastes good, by the way, hallelujah, but it's not good really for your physical body. And in the book of Leviticus, he gives them a dietary laws, what to eat, what not to eat. Why? Because God created the body and God knows what's good for the body, okay? Now, some people treat their cars better than their body. But we have to take care of our bodies. You know why? Because you and I have prophetic purposes to fulfill, fulfill on this earth. And we need to be healthy. If we're not healthy, our spirit is going to say, bye-bye. I got to leave my body. But God wants us in health. So there's certain, certain things that you and I have to do to stay in health. You have to eat right. You have to sleep right. You have to work out. I know some of you got an allergic reaction when I say work out. Because some of you are allergic to the gym, allergic to working out. But working out is good for you, okay? It brings down a lot of things, your cholesterol and your, and your blood pressure by working out. So to be in health, you and I have to do certain natural things to stay healthy, okay? But I'm ministering divine healing, okay? When, when there's a total breakdown, we need a miracle. So Jesus has provided made the provision that you may receive a miracle. But better than receiving a miracle is being in health, okay? Now, verse 66, and we end with this. It says in verse 66, your life shall hang in doubt before you, and you shall fear day and night and have no assurance of life. You've been redeemed from doubt. You know, one thing is to doubt, you know, here and there, what God promises you something, you might have a little doubt. No, no, this is, this is talking about doubt hanging over your life. There are people that you look at, they look confused. They look they're, they're, like they're full of fear. They look like they're constipated. They look like they, they're just full of doubt all around them. Their whole facial expression, there's doubt, there's fear, there's worry. There, there's a spirit of doubt just hanging over them. Guess what? Good news. You've been redeemed from doubt. And what else? You shall fear day and night. You've been redeemed from the spirit of fear. You do not have to fear in the daytime. You don't have to fear in the afternoon. And you don't have to fear in the nighttime. Because Psalms 91 has you protected in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening. Praise God. You shall fear day and night and have no assurance of life. That's part of the curse. But you and I should have assurance of life. Praise God. 
We should have assurance of life because Christ paid the price not so you can walk around with a question mark. He paid the price to put a period. It is done. On the cross, Jesus said, it is done. So here we see that we've been redeemed, hallelujah, from all these curses, from all these sicknesses, and from all these diseases. I give you praise. Now, I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. Jesus, I thank you. Yes, Lord. I want to pray for you now so you can receive your healing. And Lord, hallelujah. And Lord, we, we praise you. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. And Lord, we praise you. And Lord, hallelujah. And Lord, we praise you. Jesus, I thank you. Father, I give you praise, Lord. Lord, I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Let the power of God flow. If there's anyone sick watching this, I want you to lay your hands on the part of the body that has been afflicted. And I declare the anointed word of the Lord that Christ has redeemed you from the curse. You have been redeemed from every sickness and every disease. And Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, Lord, I rebuke infirmity. I rebuke disease. Lord Jesus, I rebuke the spirit of infirmity over the people. I rebuke the spirit of infirmity right now, Lord. And I command this devil of infirmity to leave the people's body. In the name of Jesus, be healed servants of the Lord. Be healed people of God. With his stripes, I declare you healed in Jesus' name. I rebuke all manner of affliction all manner of disease right now by the power of the word you send your word and heal them lord heal the people in the name of jesus from the top of their head to the soles of their feet lord lord they are redeemed from every sickness and every plague and i give you praise for the anointing of the holy spirit flowing right now lord heal heal stretch your hand heal in Jesus' name, I give you praise, Lord. And I just want to praise you. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I give you praise, Father. I thank you, Lord. I declare your people whole in Jesus' name. Let that anointing flow right now. Let that anointing flow. Come on, move that part of your body. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That's afflicted. Move it now. You spirit of fear, go. You spirit of doubt, go in Jesus' name. You spirit of depression, go. You spirit of oppression, go. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. I thank you. Jesus took your sin and sickness on that cross. And I declare your people healed in Jesus' name. And if there's someone that's watching this video that does not know Jesus as Lord and Savior, I want you to pray this prayer and ask him to come into your heart. Jesus outside of, outside of you, it's not good. You need Jesus in you. Okay? Ask the Lord to come in. He'll cleanse you right now with his precious blood. You could be forgiven in a second. And Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. And I thank you. Come to the Lord now. Say, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. And I come to you now as a sinner. And I thank you, Lord that you died for my sins and that you took my sin you became a curse on the cross for me and Lord I ask you right now to forgive me of every sin I have committed I ask you now wash me with your blood cleanse me with your blood I receive you now as my Lord and as my Savior and now fill me with your Holy Spirit in Jesus name thank you Lord for receiving me in Jesus name amen and amen hallelujah if you pray that prayer I want you to email us at fire at the altar at yahoo.com and just let us know hey preacher I pray to receive the Lord with you okay just email us and let us know 
welcome to the family of God and God bless you all in Jesus name.